Hi guys, Salvak here again. So today is episode two for the Bitcoin video. And in this episode, I'm gonna to talk to you about settings which I'm using for CG Miner, to power Bitfury and Gecko, and also gonna show you how I set up my Ant Miner. And I'm gonna quickly show you my setup on the Slash Pool. So you will see how the things are organized on the Slash Pool. And we're gonna be monitored and using even an app on the phone to get your hash rate controlled and monitored at all time, anytime. All right, so let's do it. And um, also I would highly recommend you watch the video number one, which is hardware setup for Bitfury, Gecko and Antminer. So that video is gonna be in the link down in the description below. And we are also gonna show you the video which is cloud mining and that's gonna be also linked up to the description in this video and also in the first video. As soon as that video will become available, I will check it and uh, actually update my links in this. So stay tuned for that. For now, let's just talk about software portion of the uh, setup which I use for CG Miner. Okay, so here is the setup which I have. Uh, as you can see here, currently running two different workers. One for, this is the Bitfury, as you can see from zero to eight. Those are the ones which are small ones, which I showed you in the video. And the second worker here is actual Gecko. One of those chips is not working very well. So you see hardware errors being zero, but in fact, this is more uh, tricky one because sometimes it just go out and become zombie but uh, as also you can see I overclock this a bit those are usually 150 megahertz but let's look on the settings for those and after that I'm gonna show you big boy which is this guy here which is ant miner so let's look on first of all on the installation so as you can see on the Windows side here I have dedicated directory I call it coins and you will have to install the driver if you have used uh, if you have USB Bitfury or Gecko, both will be detected by uh, Zadig, Zadig 2.3 and that will install the Wind driver. So once you have it, uh, just find your device here, run that as admin uh, and you'll have to install WinCP driver. Let's look it up. So if you run that, as you can see here, there is nothing by default, but you can go and say all show all devices. And you can see my Bitfury BF1, and you have to get Win USB driver installed. Just uh, currently, you see options here reinstall the driver, but uh, if you don't have it, that's what you will need. Also, for the Gecko, if this is two pack BM, you get, you get to install the same thing. So, also, you see here reinstall because I have it installed already. Once you have it, your CG miner or BF miner will see your uh, USB device and you'll see the ASIC miners and then you should be able to run your um, pool and run your CG miner. So as for CG miner, um, currently as you can see I have multiple versions. I tried many. I started with 3.7.2 and moved all the way up. Uh, BFG miner I installed as well but frankly speaking I like more CG miner. So I have CG miner right now. 4.10. It's probably not the latest one, but it is it is working fine. And I also downloaded two pack drivers, which is for Gecko. And that's basically got CG Miner as well, separate install, but uh, and also uh, Zadig uh, installation. But in fact, this is the same 4.10 version which I have already. So let's look at the setup. First, let's go and see the Bitfury. Uh, this is this Bitcoin slash, I'm using slash pool. So if you look at the setup, uh, you can edit those. Uh, the color is basically getting this in green, uh, more like old computer style. And then you have to set up full pass, CG minor, minus O, stratum. This is the site and the pool, slash pool. Uh, port is usually free, 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 free. And then you specify your user, worker one, you have to put your own user here, whatever you register and the slash pool. And then you create worker on a slash pool with specified password. Password doesn't have to be fancy. If somebody will hack it and will just add more coins and more hash power for your worker, that's fine. So you don't have to go 
very fancy here on the password and then you can limit the uh, bits and this is very important here as well because I'm using the same CGMR install but two different workers my worker if I don't have BF129 set up and Icarus equals zero uh, then it will try to add Gecko to this worker as well if you don't have it then um, this is what's gonna happen that's why I say I'm using BF1 um, Fury setup this this is here and I'm setting up it to 9 so from 0 to 8 this is what it is and Icarus I have 0 so as you can see then I run this batch it will not pick up Icarus at all right because for Icarus I will have different settings so once you have it just run it as admin and it will go and start this thing and it will connect and then you can go to your uh, slash pool account and you can validate that your hash power is increased as for gecko it's a little bit more tricky and i have this here so you will see i have multiple command lines for that some of them commented out uh, the same thing is here like color equal to that give you green and currently I'm running the first line C coin CG minor uh, worker 2 and I suggest different uh, suggested difference uh, is 32 uh, and these settings are pretty important this is how you overclock it gecko compact frequency this is you this you need this line you you can skip the other line here but uh, you need this one for sure so this is the frequency overload and this is actual frequency which you will see here as you can see on the top here it will show gecko 2 200 megahertz and then your hardware errors ratio and all the other stuff uh, I also tried 150 150 is the most used settings and 100 is a little bit low uh, it's only gonna get you maybe 8 to 10 giga hash which is way lower than normal but it's gonna keep the two geckos stable they're not gonna fail they're not gonna give you any hardware errors at all and practically uh, it's not that convenient because currently I'm running 200 and I, uh, I have active fan working on those to cool them up and they're not hot at all and I'm doing like twice as what we usually do like uh, they're marked to be like 15 giga hash each or plus more but I uh, usually got 42 so that means it's like 20 uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 it will run and these numbers is not usually correspond you will expect these two 43 and 26 to be together on this one but this is five seconds average that's why this number here on the top corner is usually way smaller than what you have here um, that's for this guy here um, as you can see pretty straightforward nothing fancy just for gecko you need to set up these parameters otherwise CG miner will not pick it up it will not see anything it will tell you you have to add your USB device as soon as you add this gecko pack frequency settings this one uh, and the specific frequency it will immediately recognize your gecko device because this is how you compile it if you run on Linux I'm running on Windows 10 if you run on Linux it will actually ask you to add this compilation settings on CG Miner before you build it up but uh, Windows is straightforward as well so that's why I'm using that so now let's go to the big guy big guy is Ant Miner uh, you can actually use the manual and I recommend you use manual to set it up properly uh, there is also utility and the button then you can go and recognize it and once you connect it to DHCP you will get IP address selected and there is utility from Antminer which will allow you to actually find your Antminer on the network I'm going pretty straightforward on that one because I have smart switch and as soon as I connected my Antminer it's immediately reported new device and its IP address I can get to my unify switch and it will show me IP address right away this is the HTTP IP you can set up it to get uh, static IP but it really doesn't matter uh, there are three setups which is three different pools going on the priority level first it will try pool 0 and if it's that failed it will try pool 1 and if that failed it will try pool 2 as you can see all of them are the same I'm not actually going to multiple pools in case one of those will fail and this is the actual frequency which is default and temperature and the fan speed 
Uh, this thing is pretty noisy, like I said, you, you hear it yourself. It's pretty noisy and it's gonna get separate room uh, where you can find it. Uh, and if you can find separate room for it and somewhere down below in the basement so you don't hear it because it's pretty high pitch noise as well on top of normal fan. And you can hear it on the first floor even. Even like, like a good sound isolation is gonna be a key here. And also you need to probably get a pipe so the hot air will escape outside and not gonna build up in the basement. Uh, well, which is basically, this is okay for winter, but it's not gonna be fine in summer because it's gonna be hot outside and you definitely need this thing to cool. Okay, so this is the frequency where you can change it. Uh, you can overclock this, but I don't recommend that. The minor links and everything else in the network is DHCP. Uh, you can change that, as I told you, that uh, you can get this static and minor configuration. Uh, minor status. In minor configuration settings, you can set it up fans to be 100% all the time, or you can just remove it and say, let the system decide which fan speed to use. Giga hash ratio is shown up here. If your power supplies are not stable, your giga hash ratio will jump up and down, so get pretty good power supplies. If you plan to have just one, get the one which is gold or silver or platinum rated and at least if you're using 110 volts then you would need at least one which is getting uh, 1600 watts um, otherwise you will not have enough power to drive this thing uh, for end minor s9 the requirements are even more strict so you need more power uh, but your giga hash ratio is going to be like anywhere between 13 uh, Terra hash to like uh, 30 and a half, 15 and even more. So Npiner S9 is definitely the one which you will like to have to get it, this profitable mine at home. Otherwise, bill for electricity which you use to power the miner will actually eat up all your profit and you will not have much. So for now, S7 is a minimum config. Anything below that with low than 4 Terra hash will not fly, it will basically gonna be not profitable for you, you will spend more time and money uh, paying for electricity and heat and coolant in summer than actually getting your bitcoins back. It also hugely depends on the current price for bitcoin. If it's gonna keep going up same as we saw in last December, then it's gonna be amazing. If it's not gonna go that fast go uh, going up, then you definitely your profit will hugely depends on the actual price. All right, so let's look on the things how you can configure it on the internet. All right, so here you can see that the slash pool. This is my account, and it's currently showing up the terra hashes which I'm getting on free workers. So worker one two three is basically going to list them here, and as you can see, this is basically statistics which will tell you how good your workers are collecting the coins and how many coins were found on the last 24 hour. This is the limit which I have right now, payout threshold. You can set it up less but it would not make much sense and it will get more charges when you actually got the money transferred, the Bitcoin transferred to your wallet. So leave it by default and just be patient. It's all about being patient on this and uh, in fact, partially hoping for the best, uh, but um, that's how it is. If you go, if you go and invest into something like this, then you really, really need to get um, in habit to wait for your reward, uh, than just getting fast and quick and getting your money right away. It's not gonna happen. Just uh, be patient on that, and it will work. It will work for you. The only thing is, you might get to increase your power supply here. Uh, to get your more terra hashes as soon as uh, like the the more the better but uh, again it depends if you have your hardware like ant miners or even the small USB uh, ASICs then your uh, power which is terra hash per second will hugely be dependent on how much hardware you have which is mining for you. All right so this is a quick review of the iPhone app which I have as well for the splash for the slash pool so what you have is basic information on the slash pool hash rate, on the information how the workers were doing for the previous time, one hour average, daily average, and also some info for you about the 
slash pool performance, uh, your estimated payouts and how many you do bitcoins and how far you wait away from the payout. So this is just the basic info and you also good information here is the current round duration. So that will give you idea how fast slash pool is actually mining the bitcoins. But uh, in general this app is available from the App Store or I'm pretty sure there should be similar application available for Android as well. So in case you want to monitor your performance of the pool from your phone, you can do that as well. Right, we go on uh, to the next subject which is getting somebody to mine this for you and be part of mine in the cloud. I'm All right, so that would conclude the video number two. As for CG Miner setup and what settings I have in my CG Miner installs on the system at my house. So if you have questions or need more info, put them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer your questions and give you more information as requested. Uh, also, I'm gonna put the link down below for the video number one which is hardware setup of the Bitfury, Gecko and Headminer S7. So check this out because this is very important to get proper hardware settings, do it proper setup, make sure you get certified electrician to do proper electrical wiring for you and then you will have your hardware ready and with the proper software settings you would be mining bitcoins on a fast rate in no time. Alright guys, so thanks for watching, if you like this video give us a thumbs up uh, share it with your friends, like this video, and uh, we'll see you next time on the episode number three, which is going to be talking about Hushflare and CG Miner and mining in the cloud and my setup there. All right, see you then. Peace.